Hey there, so what we're going to do right now is I'm looking at this word fitness and what I'd like to do is I want the base of my letters here, let's look at the F, to align perfectly on top of this orange rule. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer there. Now one way that I'm sure we all know is I can click on my text frame here and I'll just nudge it down with my arrow key but dang it it goes too far so I'm kind of stuck how do I get that to align well I could obviously use my mouse I could click on this with my arrow key move it with my mouse the problem is, is if I have smart guides turned on that can kind of be a pain smart guides tends to meddle in affairs that you may not want it to be involved with and so I could click on this and try to drag it and smart guys might get in the way and say try to snap it to this guy that's here and I just don't want to deal with that sometimes smart guides really irritates me even though they can be very useful as well so let's talk about a third way and this is actually what we're going to be talking about throughout this tutorial we're going to be going into InDesign's preferences panel and we're just going to go in and fine-tune our units and inc increments to um, allow us to say click on this and using my arrow key uh, setting it so that it moves in smaller increments so that I can fine-tune things more easily and we're also going to talk about how to uh, change things like if we look at our ruler around the perimeter of our document uh, we see that's in inches we're going to talk about how to change those to different units of measurement so picas, points, pixels, stuff like that and we're going to talk about some other keyboard shortcuts for uh, just fine-tuning various items on our page. Okay, so let's go into our InDesign preferences. I'm going to do that by going up here to InDesign, Preferences. You can also get here by pressing Command-K on your keyboard. Very uh, important keyboard shortcut for you to memorize. We're going to go to Units and Increments. And we're going to jump down here to this whole area, which is what we're going to go through. Uh, let's take a look at the cursor key. The cursor key is in reference to those arrow keys that we were just using and uh, it's in a, a it's, the default is a decimal point measurement such as this. I'm not sure if this is the actual default. I like setting this in points because points uh, they're simpler and they're more precise. I don't really have any idea what 0 0.0139 inches means. It sounds small but I can change this to points by typing in P and then if I typed in one, that's just one point. So that's pretty basic. That's usually what I have mine set at. For purposes of, of this really detailed fine tuning work, I'm going to change that to a half point. So let's go P 0 0.5. And I'm going to click OK. Click on this and let's see what happens now. I'm going to nudge it down. And that is pretty darn good. It goes a little, a little bit past it, but I'm pretty certain that uh, to the naked eye that's not going to be uh, visible but you know what let's try to make this perfect so I could go back into my preferences and change that to say 0 0.2 0 0.2 points but there's an easier way of doing this it's already our increment is already pretty darn small I'm going to hold down my command key and my shift key at the same time and since it extended just below where I want it to go I'm going to nudge it up and you can see it's just nudging up just barely you can barely tell so now we have it just about right again that is command shift and the arrow key uh, the direction you want to go okay so that is to that's taking uh, that's taking your existing increment and it's I, I believe it's moving it as like one quarter or something like that. It's, it's a certain percentage of your existing uh, default measurement. And um, say I want to go really large. I'll zoom out just a little bit and I'm just going to hold down the shift key. Okay, and I'm going to press it down and look at that, big jumps. So if my default was a half point, I think that's moving now at two points. It, it quadruples it, I believe. So, um, so those are some quick little shortcuts uh, that I find really useful for um, you know fine-tuning things or if you want to move something really far you can hold down shift and do it that way okay so uh, a few other things in that preferences panel 
you may not know this, but uh, you can adjust the size of your type using keyboard shortcuts so that you don't have to be going up into your uh, control panel or going to your uh, your type panel, your type windows, and adjusting the size that way. So let's say that I want to make this text larger. Okay, I'm going to press, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to press Command Shift and then the, uh, you know, the less than and greater than symbols, those bracket symbols that are on your keyboard, um, just to the left of your question mark key. Press that, press those three keys together, and I'm making them smaller, I'm making them larger. Okay, so, but how much smaller and how much larger? Well, again, that is dictated by your preferences panel. So I'm going to go back to preferences, command K, units and increments, and here we go, size leading. So that's increasing and decreasing in two point increments. Let's change that to one, because I like that to be a little more precise. And while we're here, let's take a look at baseline shift is one. And kerning, 20 is, in my opinion, way too high for kerning. That's gonna be, your, that's your default. I, I like to set that at five, okay? We're going to set that five and let's tackle all these things using the same example here. So let's take a look at the size again. So now it's increasing and decreasing less than it was before just by one point. If I want to change the leading, I hold down my option key and I press um, my up and down keys. So that's to increase leading. That's one point with each increment. Okay, and if we take a look at tracking, that is holding down that same option key but going left to right. So tracking is essentially the letter spacing in between. Now tracking become, comes in handy when you're um, setting uh, like paragraphs of text. And that's why I set it as smaller increments because you kind of want to be a little more precise. Um, and 20 is too, it's too large to be setting body text. It, it becomes way too spaced out. Okay, so that is how to set your increments for all those items. Now let's take a look at our rulers. Now if we go up here, as I said, you can tell that we're looking at quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch. Well, let's go back to our preferences and units and increments once again. And here we go, That's uh, this is in inches, horizontal, vertical, um, that's in reference to the rulers that are on our document. So let's change this to pikas. Say we have a client that wants everything in pikas. Okay, so I'm going to press OK. And now our rulers are in pikas. And everything is in pikas. So say we have a client that says, um, I want the baseline of this text to be four pikas below the baseline of this text. Okay, so let's draw a box to see how far that is. If I look up here, that is 2p8. So we want that to be four pikas. Okay, and now we can and measure it like that. So everything, all our, when we set our units to pikas or whatever the measurement is, everything in the document, uh, in addition to these rulers, all the measurements in the control panel, they all will change to pikas as well. Now a quick and easy way of doing that is going up here to this to these crosshair where the two arrows, where, I'm sorry, where the two rulers join, right clicking on that and you can quickly change to all these different measurements. So if you want to be one of the five people in the world that uses agates, you can change to agates. And look at that. Big, wide units. <laughs> agates. I don't know what an agate is, but if you do, uh, you can quickly change back and forth from an agate or to a Cicero, millimeters, centimeters, and so on. Much easier than going to the preferences panel. So that is uh, kind of all the basics, what you need to know about units and increments. Uh, it's kind of a nerdy topic and uh, may sound boring, but this stuff is actually, it can save you a lot of time, especially those keyboard shortcuts of, uh, you know, increasing, decreasing text, uh, letting, 
and uh, fine-tuning the placement of elements on your page. So thanks again for watching. I am the InDesign Junkie, and if you're watching me on YouTube and you found this helpful, please take a moment to su subscribe to my page. You can also check out my blog at InDesignJunkie.com and email me with any InDesign questions you have using the contact info you'll find on my blog. Thanks for watching.